Yo, Melly Mel, man, why don't you count that off for us one time, player? One, two, two, one, two, three, and. Yeah, round around, uh -huh. bounce around, uh -huh. yeah. move around, uh -huh. get on down. And see, we didn't notice at first. And I don't know how we stumbled onto it, but there was petty cash at the spot. Uh -huh. So we used to fucking come in there. Yo, I need some petty cash. <laughs> yo, yo, we need, yo. This motherfucker used to come there sometime before the session would even start. <laughs> Take all the petty cash and leave and never come back to the fucking session. And now we in the fucking session, need some petty cash to get some something. Oh, yo, who I came earlier and got the petty cash. Like, get the yeah, fuck out of here. Yeah, the strip joint. Yeah, this nigga be the strip joint, getting gold fronts on for the second. All kind of shit with the petty cash. Yo, we used to rock the petty cash hard at Kalani. To where we, brand Nubian, was responsible for no more petty cash. You know what I mean? Because. We abused the motherfucking petty cash like Just like we did the car service. Y'all, all oh, the car service. They should have never gave us the number. Uh-huh. Man, we, we, we ran up like a $14,000 car bill. <laughs> we used to take cars every day and then get cash from the fucking car drivers. Well, that was and he would just And he would just uh, charge it to the fucking game. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that's true. I, I had it to where I had one driver Waiting yeah. for me every day, like at a certain time, like, because you couldn't request a car, right? But if they're in the vicinity, they ain't gonna catch you. So he just make sure he's in my vicinity. He called me in the morning, you need money? What you need? Da, da, da. <laughs> yeah, I think I need about $200 or some shit. You know what I mean? He put it down his phone time or some shit. Man, we had so many hustles back then. Right. Calliope. Start with Calliope. I'll right. let you do it. Would you say that um, working there affected the sound? Like literally, like through the through the dudes that were in there engineering and like the the, the feeling, maybe just the emotions that he would have. Like you know what I mean? See, we, we, we we wouldn't know the difference. It's like that's that's a hard question because I mean they did they did what they had to do. Like they didn't think they See, doing. I, th I feel we like it might have affected the sound in a way, but we didn't realize it at the time. But they were working with a lot of people that was kind of in our vein, like, you know what I mean? Yeah. We come, we get there, we are waiting to get in our session and like the Jungle Brothers is in there, Tri Core Quest is in there, Daylight is in there, Black you know what I mean? Black Sheep was in there. So it's like, they probably, from working with all these groups, had certain techniques that they might have added to everybody's shit in a collective way, which made a certain cohesiveness within everybody's shit, you know what I mean? and what made people feel like that niggas thought we was down with native tongue. We wasn't, you know what I mean? But it's just because we worked in that atmosphere and all that type of shit and maybe our sound sounded like that, but it's not like we was telling them to make it sound like that. We was just looping shit up with a kind of time to mix shit. We kind of was putting it in these motherfuckers hands, you know what I'm saying? I mean, so, but, but maybe just because all of those similar groups were working together, Probably there was something there with that studio, right? Yeah, right. So upon reflection, you know what I mean. And then, like speaking of native tongues, did y'all get to know Daylight there through those through those times? Can you speak on that a little bit? Just basically Absolutely. any. What was like the first time you met those dudes? Like how you, you know, what, what you thought of their sound? What they thought of your sound? I and mean, then we already they came out before us, right? They came out a little before us, so. I was already loving the album, and then to be like, oh shit, we worked at the, game, like, the studio there. I was like, oh yeah, and Jonah Brothers too. Why? Get the fuck out of here. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was just cool. Like, you know, and like, everybody was mad cool. Like, you yeah, yeah. you get to the studio, you might be a little early, and niggas are still in their session. Their session might go a little over sometime. But it wasn't no real stress because niggas is in there now together, we chilling. Now they session ends, we start our shit, now they might stay. Yeah. While, you know what I mean? For a little while. 
while our session gets started and we doing some shit and then and brothers are still chilling, like, you know what I mean? Like that's how it was with a lot of groups and definitely Daylock was one of those. I can't remember exactly the first time we met him, but it probably was at Calliope. And it was flattering to know that people like that that we respected was respecting us. And we was just coming out, like, you know what I mean? The fact that they was liking our shit, like, and it was, you know, and it was still being made, like the shit wasn't even out, like, and it was people like that, matter of fact, Q-Tip and niggas like that, that fucking was blowing us up in the industry. Like, people in the industry was liking us before people in the street was liking us. Because they was hearing the shit in the studio. Oh, that's, you got to hear this. Like, I'm in your streets, no matter what you do. 